Greeting Thumpers, and welcome back to another trailer reaction from Hyper RPG. I'm Adam Havoc, joined here with... Cameron Rice. And we're doing the final trailer for War for the Planet of the Apes. Oh my, my god. Oh my god. We watched the, uh, the trailer teaser earlier. Um, that's how you tease a trailer. With some Chuck Heston voice. That was amazing. Mm -hmm. It barely shows anything. From the new movie, it's it splices together clips from the previous films. Mm -hmm. A little Charlton Heston in there. It's perfect. Very nice. Please do that more often. Don't give me five second sizzles of nonsense. Um, I don't know, man. I don't know about you, but I'm already sold on this movie. Matt Reeves yeah. is back. We did the trailer reaction for the last one. It looked amazing. Weta's work on the apes looks incredible. I mean, this is just like, I feel like this is just icing on the cake. Yeah. I, I mean, I was primed to see this movie already, so I, and I love the first two. So I'm very excited for this. I love the previous two trailers have been very uh, stark and dramatic in yeah, a way. And I kind of yeah. love that because that's the eight films are, I think, when they're best. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm pumped. Let's do this. Uh, yep. I, I will say going into this, I will say this is probably one of the best fr franchises out there right now that people probably forget it's even a franchise. I agree. <laughs> so good. Here we go. Is child. I don't know. Mm. But the effect. she was you. For real. She has no one else. We are not savages. Apes fight only to survive. That's a white ape, that was great. Bad human kill. Ape. All, all dead now a long time. Long time. Bad humans. It's soldier. That cute ape gonna die. That's a dead ape right there. That cute ape gonna die. Years from now, your children will ask you, what did you do in the greatest war? And you can tell them, I fought to protect this world. And the world for God and Lord. We created this. But now, Traitor Gorilla. We will bring an end to their kind. Mm. Oh. No mercy, no peace. This is war. Apes together, strong. You are impressive. You're smart as hell. You're stronger than we are. But you're taking this all much too personally. So emotional! I did not start this war. Awesome. <laughs> Woo! Month and a half. Month and a half. Oh, wait. Yeah, month and a half. Oh, boy. What, what, what is there to say? I mean, it yeah, looks that's great. so good. It feels I, it feels grand and epic, but yes. I, I think because it's the third, it's very easy for a third in a trilogy to try and be like, this is where we're going to go big. Exactly. And it feels falsely big. Like mm. it's, it's big effects, big scenes. And right. I kind of like that. At the end of the day, these are just still men and apes just in the snow. And it looks like the sea, a lot of scenes are going to be conversational scenes between yes. Woody Harrelson and Caesar. uh, Caesar's circus's ape, uh, which is great. I love that. I love that. This looks like what's great. What makes this series work and what made the original series work back in the day too, was these giant sci-fi concepts all trying to do all these kinds of things, but it, grounded it completely in character and character motivation and why these people did the things they did like charlton heston he's doing things he's doing because we get to know who that character is um and in this series too you completely see why caesar is caesar and what i loved about the second ending of the second one was it made you see a general who's doing everything he can to avoid going to war yes and now this third film is going to be 
that general accepting war is inevitable. Right. And what's the best way to win it? Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's great. And I think it's going to add some fascinating conflicts. Um, and I'm looking forward to see what if, and they don't need to, but what they add to Woody Harrelson's character so that we understand his motivation perspective. Yeah. Right. Beyond like, this guy's an asshole. Yeah. And, and I think we, I think we're starting to slowly get a little glimpses of it. You know, we see him picking up these photos of kids and stuff. So I think yeah. that'll probably some, in some way play a, uh, a role into his motivation and, and, and what he's all about. But I think you're absolutely 100% right when you say that these movies, as much as they like to advertise the action, that's not the story. Yeah. The story is very much driven by Caesar, by the relationships he has with the other apes, by the human counterparts, what their relationships are within yep. their own groups, and what the, what the two sort of ideals are of these two different of, of the humans and the apes and and misjudging misjudging one yep. another exactly like and i think that is what really draws me into this movie and i think yeah. audiences into this these movies because you you can look at those sort of things and those themes and you can there's a lot of relate you can a lot of relatability mm -hmm. and i think that's why people really latch on to these movies and we kind of tend to forget that these apes movies are out there. And then every few years when they, cause we had the first one in 2011, yeah. then the last one in 2014. And now it's been three years since that. And every time these pop up again, you, you're really reminded of like, Oh yeah. Yeah. How well they're executed, how well they're, they're directed, how well mm -hmm. they're acted. What Andy Serkis does as Caesar and what all the other supporting characters do. I mean, Toby Kebbell in the last movie. And now we're yes. seeing all the other characters in these movies. Um, I'm interested by that gorilla. I want to know why. Totally, why? totally. And you know, we had we had um, uh, what was the actor's name in the last movie? Jason. Oh, Clark. Jason Clark. I really, I like Jason Clark. He was a lot. great. You know him and Carrie Russell, and then we had James Franco. Like they bring in these actors who I think they bring in these actors and they make these characters characters that you can f fully understand. Gary yes. Oldman, you fully understand their motivations and you sympathize to them to a certain extent. But you're also kind of you're not sure really what side to root for, even though at the yeah. end you kind of are mostly rooting for Caesar and the Apes. I agree, um, yeah. and I love that so much. And I think what Matt Reeves did when he came into the second movie, he took what Rupert Wyatt did and he just elevated it to another level. And it looks like he's taking this movie and doing the same thing again. The visual effects. It, this is a movie that I would be very, very surprised if it is not one of the top three contenders for the Oscars. It's yeah, but it doesn't tend freaking to freaking believable. I don't know, and someone will correct me in the in the comments. I don't. I believe the other two were also nominated, mm. and I think they were even the odds-on favorites. And I think they ended up losing to like honestly, like the Transformers movies yeah, or something like that. I think that. you're right. Yeah, I think you're right. And it's a shame. And we have another Transformer movie coming out this year, the same exactly, year. Exactly. <laughs> so exactly. Funny. There's actually a lot of movies that came out that are coming out now that are sequels of movies that came out in 2014 that were going up against this. Yeah. Um, and it's a bummer because I think what, not only what just what Andy Serkis does, but also what the visual effects team at Weta does to create these characters. Like, they yeah. really are characters. They're not just skinning an actor. Like, you really have to translate that performance and it has to be done very meticulously. And the fact that these apes look so real, mm -hmm. you're going to, it's going to transport you into that world even more. And I think we look at a lot of superhero movies and a lot of these franchise films that create these visual effects that they're really big and bombastic. But at the end of the day, you know, it's a visual effects, you know, it's a trick. Yeah. Whereas with this, you look at it and you're just absorbed into the movie and you're treat, you're looking at it as it's, it's Caesar. It's an actual ape, not well, it feels like an a big CG thing. Because they're basing so much of it off of that performance. It almost yeah. feels like how back in the seventies and eighties and uh, early nineties, when they would take like makeup effects and stuff like that, cause you were building off of something real. Exactly. So it had that feeling of like, now usually those the best ones had the biggest budgets like those kind of makeup effects movies mm -hmm. but you it, because you're building off of something real it's that it's that thing of it's something you can put your hand to and yes. i think if these ape if if we saw behind the scenes footage and all it was was like Woody Harrelson was yelling at a tennis ball i think Caesar would have a floaty yeah to him exactly that uh the human eye whether you work in the visual effects or not can slightly detect where you're like that's not quite right there yeah and i think because they're building off of people who are actually standing there doing these performances and they can animate off of that that therefore there is a feeling of like oh there's a groundedness mm -hmm. i feel that i feel that thing is there plus i think it heavily influences the performances on set Yes. It's not Woody Harrelson talking to a tennis ball that's not reacting. It's him looking Andy Serkis dead in the eye, and they're actually having a dialogue together. Yep. yep. And I think that that enormously changes performance. Usually. You know, I mean, Star Wars prequels, look at those. 
that deals with a lot of CG stuff. You can tell it kind of affects the performance. You look at this, and it's it's intense, but it's because two actors are looking at each other eye to eye, and they are you know going through dialogue, and that's what I love about this franchise is that yep. the dialogue it's heavy, but it's not it's not just exposition. It's real dramatic tension. It's real emotion, and I I love that. I love that a franchise like this that deals about men fighting apes is more than just about that. It's really just driven by character. <laughs> July 14th. Come so on, baby. good. So good. Uh, guys, let us know in the comments below what you thought about this final trailer for War for the Planet of the Apes. What are your feelings on the first two movies? And what's something that you're really looking forward to in this movie? And where, where would you want to see this franchise go? I mean, they're very, yeah. very, very much advertising it to be the final chapter of a trilogy. Yes. What do you think is going to happen? I'm so curious. I cannot wait to go watch this movie. It's going to be a good time. Yeah, guys, let us know. Please, please. If, if they do a fourth one, if Caesar survives, right. what's the where's the fourth one go? Do they do we see a for lack of a better way of putting it, remake of the first Planet of the Apes? Do we go to the Charlton Heston character? Do we see that, or do we do like these films are doing, where it's like just jump ahead five years and now right. what's that and what's that and what's that? Yeah, I'm super super curious. Let us know in the comments below. Also, guys, make sure you subscribe right here. Hyper RPG. We're doing a whole bunch of other different types of videos. Check out our Patreon. We're doing custom trailer reactions for you guys and uh, watch us live on Twitch. Every single day, every single week, a bunch of content, twitch.tv slash hyperrpg. We'll catch you in the next reaction. Later.